Aloha YouTube! So the Highlander has been an incredible success for Toyota over the past four generations, and it has a version for almost every need. But there is one asterisk on that, and that is if you needed a big third row. Well, say hello to the solution, the all new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. It's larger, more luxurious, and offers more power than any other Highlander before it. But is it a better family SUV than Pilot, Telluride, and CX-90? Let's put it to the test today in beautiful Kona, Hawaii and find out. All right, so let's get things started here with a spec dump and under the hood. Now there's a lot of important things to talk about here because the Grand Highlander is actually offered with three different powertrains. So you have a standard 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder, a traditional hybrid system, and then you have this right here. This is the hybrid max system. This is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine paired with a front electric motor, a rear E axle, and of course your battery pack. Total system output is 362 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. So this is certainly the most powerful Highlander ever offered. Each version has a different transmission. This one has a six-speed automatic transmission and the combined fuel economy is 27 miles per gallon. Now, of course, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of all the other specifications later on the test drive and show you just how much performance this model has Plus, we're gonna get our signature sound level reading. But first, let's close up the hood and take a look at the exterior. Now, starting out here in the front, the first thing you'll probably notice is that this looks really nothing like the current Highlander. It actually takes a lot more influence, if you ask me, from the RAV4 as well as the Toyota Sequoia. It kind of has a boxier presence to it, and that is especially true when we're talking about the grille. So you'll notice we have kind of a two-part design here. We've got a thin piece up here with your Toyota badging, and you also have the chrome accenting that runs through there. Then you've got your large grille down here. This is kind of a trapezoidal shape. As you can see, it's kind of finished in a uh, gray color here, but there's not really a lot of differences between the three different trim levels. So this is available in XLE, limited and platinum grades. But one thing that does change between them is if you choose the hybrid max powertrain, you are gonna get this more aggressive lower fascia, which includes this silver accent through here. And let's go ahead and talk about the lighting. So you do have standard LED headlights on all versions of the Grand Highlander. However, if you choose the limited or the platinum trim levels, that's gonna get you this more premium arrangement, which includes a LED daytime running light as well as an LED turn signal indicator through there. And then you also have your LED fog lights down below. Now, as we come around to the rear design, you'll see the same kind of boxy look on board. I will say, actually, this looks a lot like the RAV4, if you ask me. It has a lot of the same kind of design elements in the overall shape, and especially when it comes to the taillights. So I'll let Josh go ahead and run through the uh, different taillights here. We'll see if every element is LED. So we got the LED brake light. LED turn signal is the brake light, and we have the LED reverse light. So this gets three out of three fully approved here with our taillights. Now, as far as other elements back here, we've got a black accent that's gonna connect between the two taillights. Grand Highlander is body colored, but it is printed out across the back. Hybrid Max branding through there. And as I drop down to the lower panel, you'll notice a little bit of differences because this is a Hybrid Max model. You're gonna have the dual chrome tipped exhaust outlets, which look quite nice. You also have this kind of accenting down here, although the rest of it is gonna be finished in the matte black plastic. Now, as far as tow rating, maximum towing is going to be 5,000 pounds. That's for the gas model as well as the hybrid max. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about our wheel options. So standard is an 18 inch silver alloy on your XLE. Then you have 20 inch alloys on both the limited and the platinum models. Just like with the front and rear though, the hybrid max is going to include a different wheel. It's going to give you this contrast alloy to really stand out and give it a sportier look. Now you do have the matte black plastic moldings around the wheel arches. And then when we come to the mirrors, you have standard blind spot monitoring as well as standard heating. If you want uh, power folding, that will require choosing the limited or the platinum trim levels. 
But of course the main thing that makes a Grand Highlander actually grand is the fact that it is larger. So this is 201 inches long, which means it's actually about six and a half inches longer than the regular version of the Highlander. It's also about six and a half inches shorter than the Sequoia. So as you can see, it kind of fits nicely in between those two models within the Toyota lineup. Now, as far as the overall design, it does look a lot boxier than the regular Highlander. You also have a little bit of chrome accenting down here on the lower part of the window. Of course, you do have a chrome roof rail as well. Let's talk about safety systems, though, because this is a big area that's always good for Toyotas because you have standard Safety Sense 3.0. That's all four of your major active safety systems. Plus, if you want a new feature, which is a Toyota First Traffic Jam Assist, you can get that on the Platinum trim level, and that allows you to go hands-free in traffic jam situations under 25 miles per hour. But anyways, that's it for the exterior. If you're new here, we're brothers, and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now on to the interior. First, let's take a look at our key fob. This is your typical Toyota key fob. So you do have a standard smart entry system on all Grand Highlanders. And the fob itself is actually branded Grand Highlander. Now, of course, to get inside the vehicle, just grab behind the handle that will unlock the door. And take a look inside of the cabin. Just like with the exterior, the interior really bears no resemblance to that of the regular Highlander. Now, like always, first let's talk about our cabin material and color selection. So the XLE will start out with a Softex leatherette seat. When you go for the Limited or the Platinum, that will upgrade you to real leather. But if you choose the Hybrid Max powertrain on either of those two models, that will get you this right here. So this is going to be a real leather seat, but it also has a special suede insert that runs down the middle. As you can see, that's pretty cool. It's gonna grip you in place when you're driving aggressively. And you also have some bronze accenting inside of this, which is a theme you're gonna see repeated all throughout the rest of the cabin. Now, as far as color options, you can get this black, you can also get gray, or you can get in a platinum exclusive Portobello. Now, as far as seat controls, 10-way power adjusting with two-way lumbar support across all the models. But let's go ahead, climb inside, and take a look at the details. Now that we've climbed inside, let's go ahead and look at the overall materials. So starting out over here on our door trim, we do have a leather that runs all through here. It is going to be soft touch along the top. And right here, we've got a piece of what appears to be faux carbon fiber. This does vary depending on the trim level. Some models will come with a faux wood or a faux aluminum. The windows are going to be one touch auto up and down for all four. Two person memory seating will be on both the Limited and the Platinum. Continuing on up here, the extreme upper part of the dash is going to be a hard touch plastic. However, the more accessible area right here is going to be covered in a leatherette with a stitching detail. More of that carbon fiber trim going through there. And along the tunnel here, this will be padded on both the Limited and the Platinum trim level. But let's go ahead and fire it up with the standard push button start located right there. Now after startup, let's go ahead and move into our gauge cluster. So this is a nice premium feature that you have on board. 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster standard on both the Limited and the Platinum. You have a seven inch multifunction display if you choose the uh, base XLE, but this has all the same tricks as typical Toyota. So it, you can do things like change the designs when you change the drive modes. Now, if you choose the Platinum model, you would also have a head up display. Now, as we pull back here, you've got rain sensing wipers right there. We do have the latest version of the Toyota steering wheel. So it is going to be nicely leather wrapped with a stitching detail through there. You have a little bit of piano black accenting. The wheel itself will be manual tilt and telescoping on all models. And then you also have steering wheel heating on both the limited and the platinum trim levels. Now let's go ahead and turn over here to interior storage. So all this console area is very different from your regular Highlander model, but it's still nice and versatile. So when I slide back that, you're going to notice a lot of storage space inside of here. Even though the opening is a little narrow, it gets deeper and it goes uh, all the way down here. It's hard to show you how much this is, but basically it's above my elbow. So it's a lot of space that you could stick a ton of different stuff and there is a sliding shelf inside. 
as you move up from that, you've got your two cup holders. You have another large bin right here, which Toyota says can store something like a hydro flask or a bottle that's bigger than a traditional cup holder. We have a big storage area right here. The right side of that is gonna be a wireless phone charging pad, standard on all versions of the Grand Highlander. And then of course, one of the signature things about a Highlander is your storage self. So the Grand Highlander does preserve that, so the passenger has their own area where they can stick their phone, something like that. They even have their own USB port located right there, in addition to the two that are located over here for the driver. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our shifter. So if you choose the gas model or the traditional hybrid model, you're gonna have a traditional shifter. Here with the Hybrid Max, we have the electronic style shifter. So operation of this is uh, just like it is on other Toyota and Lexus products. Push to the left, then pull down. That's gonna put you into drive. You do have paddle shifters on the steering wheel as well. Now for reverse, just press up in the opposite direction. And when you do, uh, you will either find a traditional backup camera or a 360 degree camera system on board. As you can see, we do have that 360 camera, which has the overhead view as well as active trajectory. And then for park, just press the P right there. By the way, the mirrors do tilt down when in reverse to help you see the parking lines better. And you have an electronic parking brake with brake hold. Now moving on up, you'll see some of that bronze accenting around the vents and we have our climate controls right there. So this is a standard three zone automatic climate control setup. Nice and easy to use. We've got these big knobs where you can adjust the temperature, fan speeds, zones, all of that. I will say though, it does have a little bit of an incomplete look because it is finished in this matte black where everything else around it is finished in the piano black. So it kind of makes it stand out a little bit more than I would have liked. But I am happy to report, especially on a hot day like today here in Hawaii, we do have ventilated seats and that's included on both the Limited and the Platinum while you have standard heated seats on all three trim levels. Next up, let's take a look at our audio system, or I rather, rather should say take a listen to it because we do have the 11 speaker JBL sound system on board for both the Limited and the Platinum. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, overall sound quality of this system is definitely pretty good. It's very strong, fills up the large cabin well, and is a big upgrade over the standard sound system. Now, one thing you will not have to upgrade, though, is this display. This is a standard 12.3 inch infotainment screen on all three trim levels. Right now, I'm inside of the Android automotive interface. Of course, you do have that as well as Apple CarPlay, but the cool thing is that this does run wirelessly. Now, when I go back into the infotainment system, you'll see that this is Toyota's latest infotainment system. So this does have uh, all of their latest technology, including this dynamic navigation system, which is very nice and responsive for both the limited and the platinum trim level. Now, as we move above the display, we've got an auto dimming mirror with Homelink Universal Remote. This would be a digital mirror if you choose the platinum trim level. And then I'll press this button right here, and this is going to show us our panoramic sunroof. This is gonna be standard on the platinum trim level. It is optional on the lower models. As you can see, large piece of glass and you can slide back the front portion. Now the front of the cabin is quite nice, but really the reason why you would buy a Grand Highlander is the rear space. So let's get into that. We have 39.5 inches of legroom, 38.5 inches of headroom, that is gonna put it slightly behind the Honda Pilot as well as the Kia Telluride, but not by a lot. And this is still very spacious. As you can see, I am five foot eight and this seat is adjusted to my driving position. And I've got a ton of space here, plenty of leg room and knee space. Plus I've got the bendy ruler, which is extra bendy today because it's very hot outside. And let's check that. Knee space looks like we've got about eight inches of knee space, plus my feet can slide underneath the seat very easily and wiggle around. So very happy back here. Now, as far as uh, the seating arrangement, as you'll notice, we have the captain's chairs arrangement. 
this is standard. You are going to have available bench seating if you prefer, but if you have the limited or the platinum trim level, you've got this center console right here with extra cup holders and storage, and it is removable if you don't want it. As far as other amenities, let's move over here to the center. We have a standard uh, climate control system, like I mentioned earlier, so you can make your adjustments back here. The limited trim level is also going to throw in three-stage heated seats, and if you choose the platinum trim level, that's going to have ventilated seats as well so that's a pretty cool feature on both sides we have usb-c ports we also have a 1500 watt uh, household style outlet down there at the bottom now turning over to our door trim how is it finished finished pretty nicely we have a soft touch material along the top we have leather padding on the armrest portion you also notice the window is covered with a sunshade so you can slide that up there and block the sun if it's in your eyes. And you've got a lot of cup holders and storage built into the door as well. And we've been talking about the third row all this time, so it's time to actually put it to the test and get back there. So first off, it's going to be pretty easy. You're just going to grab this handle. Once you do that, this is going to fold and slide out of the way so you have this nice large pathway into the back. even has a step built in. All right, so I'm climbing back here into this third row seat, and I have to say I'm very impressed. First of all, this is a night and day difference from the regular Highlander because the regular Highlander has about 27 inches of legroom. It's very claustrophobic. This one actually has 33.5 inches of legroom. That's very large for a third row in this segment. As a matter of fact, one of the very largest in the segment, greater than Pilot and greater than Telluride. As you can see, I have a good amount of space here with this seat actually slid all the way back. I've probably got about two inches. I can slide my feet underneath the seat as well. And the thigh support is pretty good. I'm supported down here because this seat is raised up pretty high. So it feels more like a traditional seat than many of the other models, which feel like a jump seat. Now, as far as features back here, we've got vents built into the ceiling. We have USB ports on both sides. We also have a large tray, which is a cup holder and also a general storage bin. As far as the seats, you have three across, and these do also recline. Now coming up to the cargo area, this has also been very impacted by the additional width. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Of course, you do have a hands-free power tailgate. And once it opens up, you're gonna immediately see a lot of space. That's because behind the third row seat, we now have 20.6 cubic feet. Toyota says that's enough for seven uh, luggage bags, so it's very impressive. That's going to expand out to 57.9 cubic feet behind the second row and bring you to a maximum of 97 and a half cubic feet. So for those of you keeping track, that is a huge amount of space for this segment. As a matter of fact, that is 14 cubic feet more than the standard Highlander, 10 cubic feet more than the larger Sequoia, and 10 cubic feet more than Pilot and Telluride. So this brings it to one of the very largest in the entire class. Now, let's go ahead and fold down these seats so we can take a look at all that space. You're just gonna grab that handle, push it forward, and that will normally do it, but it hit the other seat. <laughs> now let's fold down those seats so we can take a look at all that space. To do so, you're just gonna grab that handle, push it forward. There are not gonna be power folding third row seats on any trim level of the Grand Highlander. And there you go. I went ahead and folded down the second row before this scene because there are not handles in the back, so be aware of that. But once you get all those seats down, it's definitely gonna be worth it because like I said, this is an absolutely enormous amount of space. Now, from Kentucky, we did go ahead and bring our tape measure so I can tell you guys exactly how much space we're looking at here. If I can handle my own tape measure here. All right, got that under control. And we have looking like 89 inches from the front seats all the way back here. So that's going to be plenty of space for pretty much anything you need. As far as any other features to look at back here, we do have a 1500 watt power outlet in the rear as well, since this is the hybrid max model. And there is a little bit of storage under here, just enough that we can store that cargo cover as well as have a spare tire. Alrighty, so now it's time to go out on the road and see this hybrid max powertrain at work 
Of course, we're going to cover more than just the power. We're going to talk about all the different powertrains as well as all this information right here. And before we get started, I also want to you know, introduce Josh again to those of you who uh, don't know him from the channel. Mason couldn't come with us uh, to Hawaii, so Josh graciously sacrificed and came yes. to Hawaii to help me out. So thanks for coming. <laughs> Glad to be here once again. <laughs> right, let's get things started here with the hard acceleration. Just like that, we're up to 60 miles per hour in the Grand Highlander. So even though this is a big gal, she can move when she has 362 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. That's a, a lot of power for this segment, for sure. So just to remind you guys from the spec dump, what this is is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. We have a front electric motor. We also have a rear E-axle. All that goes together to give you the power figures I just cited. Um, and a traditional six-speed automatic as well as part of this powertrain. So it's a very interesting setup that really gives this a performance edge unlike most things in the segment. Now there are two other powertrains. You have your traditional gas and you also have a traditional hybrid. Josh will tell us the specs on those. Yeah, so your traditional gas is going to have that same 2.4 liter turbo straight four. That's going to be putting out 265 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, and that will also have an eight-speed automatic transmission. And then you have your regular hybrid powertrain. That's going to have a 2.5 liter four-cylinder with two electric motors and 243 horsepower total system output, and that will have a eCVT transmission instead of a regular automatic. And if you want to see the hybrid at work, just stay tuned because we're actually going to drive a hybrid model a little later in the video. But as far as this hybrid max, that's all about having that extra performance. Uh, you saw me just demonstrate that and 0 to 60, Toyota says, is 6.3 seconds. So it's a substantial improvement over the other two versions. All right, let's try it out in sport mode. Very nice. <laughs> Actually heard just the tiniest amount of slippage as it was uh, figuring out how to distribute all that power and get it to the ground. Of course you do have a standard all wheel drive system with that being said with the hybrid max version. And this powertrain is gonna be offered as an option on both the limited and the platinum trim levels. As far as availability of the other powertrains, the 2.4 turbo four cylinder will be the standard version for all three trim levels. And then you have the XLE and the limited trim levels being available in the traditional hybrid. So we've got a pretty flat, smooth area here to do a sound level reading. So let me turn on the climate here and let's give it a try. All right. All right, looks like we've settled at 55 decibels even. Definitely not bad whatsoever. And I do believe Toyota has said that they've put extra work into this hybrid max powertrain to add some more sound deadening to make it an even more comfortable and enjoyable ride because this is what the Grand Highlander is meant for. It is meant for these long road trips. Right, that's a very Lexus-like number. Um I believe that is right on the uh, Lexus RX 350 that we had a couple months ago back at home. Now to see where it actually ranks against its main round of competitors, it is actually going to be the second quietest that we have tested in this class. It's gonna, the only other one that is quieter than this is the Kia Telluride, and it fits right between that and the Hyundai Palisade, so this is quite impressive, guys. Now we're on a pretty smooth stretch of highway here, but that hasn't been the case for the entire day. We've driven this around quite a lot uh, and hit a lot of different kinds of road surfaces, which has really demonstrated to us we have phenomenal ride quality on board. Toyota has really emphasized this. Of course, you know, the regular Highlander is known for being so comfortable, so smooth. I'm happy to say that those same attributes carry on for the Grand Highlander as well. You hit big bumps and stuff like that. You kind of see them, you hear them maybe, but you don't get much in terms of like vibration that's gonna enter the cabin. 
and the seats themselves very comfortable as well it's just a great vehicle to kind of take off on a road trip like we were talking about this earlier you could easily just head across the u.s and you're going to be in absolute comfort and that's something that Toyota really stressed to us all throughout this week that we've been here. This is the ultimate car for your Ohana here in Hawaii or your family for those long road trips. Now, just like I was saying earlier with the bumps in the road, this is also a very straight highway that we're on, but we've been on some curvy areas of road today. So let's talk a little bit about handling characteristics. So this is a big SUV, and I'm not going to say you can't feel it. You can, definitely can feel it. As a matter of fact, I think Toyota has made this intentionally very soft um, for the ride quality purposes. So even compared to the regular Highlander, I think we have a little bit more body roll. That being said, we have driven the traditional hybrid model, which you'll see a little later in the video, and comparatively, the Hybrid Max is going to be tuned a little bit sportier. So I think they tightened it down just a little bit, they definitely changed the uh, steering so it's going to be heavier you're going to have a bit more response but just be aware that just because you choose hybrid max this is not going to transform this into a performance suv by any stretch of the imagination it's really about having that extra power for acceleration not for handling or corner carving or anything like that all right, another big topic that is kind of crucial for this Grand Highlander is the fuel economy. Obviously, this is one of the only options in this segment that is offering any sort of hybrid powertrain, and so you're going to see the benefits of that when it comes to the fuel economy. Uh, now, this hybrid max that we are in right now, uh, it is going to, with standard all-wheel drive, come together at 26, 27, 27 combined MPG. And then there's a lot of other ratings, but if you go for the uh, other hybrid powertrain, then you're going to range, this is going to be where you can get the highest, you can range from 33 to 36 MPG combined. And if you go for the traditional gas model, then that will range you from 22 to 24 combined. So not bad for any one of those models, but if fuel economy is really where you want to go, don't go for the hybrid max, but go for the regular hybrid model. And honestly, guys, that's kind of what I want to lead into with our slam dunk and our air boss. So for us, the slam dunk today has got to be just the wide variety of powertrain selections. It's kind of tied, you know, with the extra space because this is a huge vehicle and I'm very impressed by that as well. But I wanted to say the powertrain selection because that is really a big distinguishing factor from the competition. Most in this segment are just offering one variation. It's just a V6. It doesn't get that good of fuel economy. It doesn't have that much power. So this here, you have the ability to get a lot of power, a lot of fuel economy, or you can just go the traditional route. And I like that you have all those choices. Now on the air ball side of things, we haven't talked about the pricing yet, but this can be a pretty pricey SUV. And when you get up into the upper trim levels like this limited hybrid max, or especially the platinum hybrid max, which is pushing close to $60,000 with destination calculated in, the cabin is not incredibly premium for that price point. It's definitely not going to give you the same kind of experience that you get with a Palisade, a Telluride. Some of the more premium competition has a lot more luxury amenities and features inside of the cabin. Alrighty, so now we switch over to an XLE trim level, and this is going to be the standard hybrid system. So we'll start off with a bit of an acceleration here so you guys can see how this operates. All right, so there was above 60 miles per hour. Of course, we were going downhill, so this doesn't constitute a zero to 60 by any stretch of the imagination, but just a good uh, example of how this system operates and what kind of power you've got. Not bad. It's not too bad. Of course, it is not your hybrid max system. It's substantially less power than that but it really doesn't feel too bad here in person, even for a larger SUV like this. 
And just a quick reminder of the specs for the XLE Hybrid. Uh, this is gonna have the 2.5 liter four cylinder hybrid system with total system output of 243 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. And we are in the all wheel drive version. So this will be getting a combined MPG of 34 miles to the gallon. Right, and of course that really is kind of the big focus of this model. You don't get this model for power, you get this one for ultimate fuel efficiency. If you choose front wheel drive, you can actually get up to 36 miles per gallon combined, which is crazy for an SUV this big and something that really stands out from the competition. Um, as far as what we've been doing on this brief drive route, so we've been driving for probably about an hour at this point, we're kind of going up and down hills, changing elevation, quite a bit here in Hawaii and we've been doing it looks like 31 miles per gallon so far so very impressive especially like I said since we were climbing um, up most of that journey so far um, still getting really impressive fuel economy yeah for sure now as we kind of go through some corners here of course with performance not really being the focus of the hybrid model, you're gonna notice that this is very softly dampened. You're gonna have a great ride quality. We have the um, small alloy wheels, of course, as well on the XLE, so that's gonna help your ride quality even further. And you know, compared to the hybrid max model, it's just gonna be a lot more, you know, kind of laid back, comfort oriented, um, you know, really just keeping that focus on ultimate comfort, ultimate fuel economy. One of the really nice things, of course, about this Grand Highlander is just that you have all those different selections of powertrains to match whatever you want. And of course, this does also have the eCVT versus the other two models, which have an eight-speed automatic and a six-speed automatic, respectively. We'll see if we can't uh, speed up to 55 miles per hour and we'll do a sound level reading. Of course, we're in an unfamiliar location being Hawaii. This is our, both our first times here. We're very grateful to be exploring the island. Oh, yes. Um, but the speed limits are pretty low in most places. Um, so, like I said, we'll see if we can't get up to speed here. All right, now that we're up to 55, let's go ahead and do our sound level reading. All right. Oh, crept down on me last second. Looks like we're going to be sitting at 55.2 decibels. Not bad at all, especially yeah. for this standard hybrid that we have here right now. And to finish things off with this test drive, let's go over the warranty components. So your basic and warranty is going to be three years, 36,000 miles. Your powertrain warranty is going to be five years, 60,000 miles. And Toyota is also kind enough to throw in two years of complimentary maintenance. But overall, I think you guys will be very impressed with this powertrain selection. Like I said, you can match this to whatever is your priority. Now at this point, you've seen that the Grand Highlander is offering a lot, but you're probably wanting to know how much is the price. So let's get into that. The starting price for an XLE with the standard powertrain as well as front wheel drive will be $43,070. Now there's a lot of different versions and a lot of different powertrain combinations that can uh, go through a lot of different prices so we'll just put those on the screen right now i will say that the top end price for the platinum hybrid max all-wheel drive is going to be 58,125. and as far as what we're in today this is going to be the limited with the hybrid max system so it's going to be fifty-four thousand and forty dollars msrp we also have 425 for the optional paint 1335 destination for a total of fifty-five thousand eight hundred dollars well guys, we hope you have enjoyed this in-depth look at the all-new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. We certainly have here in beautiful Kona, Hawaii. Again, we just want to thank you guys for being subscribers because you open up the uh, doors to all these possibilities, allowing us to sample the latest vehicles in beautiful places like Hawaii. If you haven't subscribed already, it really helps us out a lot. So make sure to go down below and click subscribe. Also follow us on TikTok and Instagram as well. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.